So I'm going to talk about HTML. HTML, you probably know, is the stuff that websites are made of. Um, you've got your image tags where you're saying, hey, here's a URL, render this image. Hey, here's a link. When you click on that, go to this link. Um, what you probably didn't know is this could be the client side code of a real time multiplayer game. So I'm going to talk about how we build that. So in, a, in the uh, usual case, we have an image tag. Uh, it's going to send this request. So it's for bts.png. This sends a get request. This actually literally are the are the characters that come down the wire. There's a bunch of other stuff too, but uh, and then the server responds and says okay, and then it sends a picture of BTS. Um, what you might not wonder about, oh, then it renders it. The final step is the browser gets this, renders it. So what you might not wonder is where this came from. So maybe it came out of a file system. That's pretty likely, but it doesn't have to be. It could have been generated by random bits. Maybe it was just making a bunch of random pixels, and this happened to be the one time that it made a K-pop group. Um, or more likely, maybe there was something else, like there was a neural net that was trying to make the coolest image possible. Um, and the the important thing is this this could vary. You could send you know this request for bts.png later, and it could come back with something different. Maybe the neural net has been churning for a long time, and it comes up with a cooler picture of BTS. Um, but the point is, this is reflective of some kind of server-side state. So we can make a game. We can make a real simple game where we ask for the show image from a server. So we say, hey, server, show me. And the server says, OK, I've got a hero who's at coordinate 1, 0. So I'm going to render the hero at those coordinates. Um, and then we, we render that. So we see this black dot that's the hero. Um, you can also alter state. Uh, with requests. So suppose we have a link. User clicks the link. This says go down. And the server sees this and says, ah, I know whenever I see a go down, I will move the hero's position and I will change y plus 1. And then I will do something very special where I will I will not respond with something. So previously, you know, I showed like it sends back an image. It's going to send back not a 200 response, but a 302 response, which says, I don't have anything to give you. Um, go here. So just go somewhere else. So this means that we can send a user who clicks a link anywhere on the internet if we control the server that they click the link to, or anywhere on the web. So post redirect, let's say we send them back to this thing I just showed you, where it's like show. And now the hero is at different coordinates, because we just altered the state when they click the link. And now they're back at this page with the IMG tag, and boom we've rendered a different image. So we have changed the game state. They're playing a game. They're moving this black dot around. All right. So now I'm going to show you an actual application. Uh, so suppose we have, OK, archive of our own. It's a, it's a site for, I actually have a tab still open. Um, but so it's a site for posting fan fiction. Um, but we're going to look for Colossal Cave fanfic. And we're going to come up with the thing that I made. Um, Colossal Cave Adventure. So this uh, actually is the Colossal Cave Adventure, if it's going to render today. Um, oh, yep, here it is. Ta-da, this is Adventure. Um, so this is a text adventure that we're playing right now. And we can say, like, we're outside of a dirt building. OK, we're going to go in. Um, and now we're inside the building. Ta-da, we're playing a game. So the cool thing is this isn't actually text. This is actually an image that I've just written text onto. Um, so you can see this is a 500 by 400 image that's sent from the server. Um, and I can say, like, take. And it has a little buffer of the command that I'm writing. And it knows take isn't a complete command. So it's waiting for me. What do I want to take? I'm going to take this food. And so now I'm holding this food. Uh, and you can see um, this image is now different. This is what it was previously. After I click those links, this is what the image that came back from the server. So ta-da, we're playing a Colossal Cave Adventure. All right. So this is pretty cool uh, because we can send any signal to the server using a links, and we can bounce them back to the game because that's what was happening. I was clicking this link, and it was going away to the server that has my, my adventure game state. And then it's bouncing them back to AO3. So we can render any server state using an IMG tag. So that can be anything. Anything that is expressible via an image, we can, we can make it. Sounds like we can do anything. But wait, uh, I did promise that 
we were going to do real time games and IMG can only render state information one time and it's done, right? Um, so we need to refresh the page to get an updated state. You know, for a text adventure, for a text adventure, that's fine because we're just lobbing commands at it. And then it says, okay, well, here's the response. Um, but what if we had an image that was actually many images? Consider a GIF. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, so I've got this little spinning world GIF. I'm gonna go into Chrome tools and I'm gonna throttle, I'm gonna pretend to throttle my connection down to 300 kbps and we'll refresh this. And what happens is quite interesting. It loads very slowly, but it actually is trying to render as many frames. It was trying to show me a frame as frequently as possible. It's like, okay, I got another one. Wait, I got another one. Here you go. It's not waiting for the whole GIF. It's showing me each frame as it comes in in real time and is rendering it as quickly as possible. So to take things back to that paradigm or this this uh, diagram model, we've got a foo.gif request coming out from this IMG tag. And the server says, okay, well, here's your first frame. And the browser renders it right away. And then at some point in the future, does, don't know when, it could be a minute, it could be two minutes, it could be a second, whatever, it sends another frame. And then whenever it gets that frame, the browser says, okay. The browser doesn't know the difference between a server withholding frames versus a server that's just slow. So every time it gets a frame, it re renders it. So this means that GIFs are data streams. We can use a GIF to render information in real time. Kind of, we can use a data push model where the server is pushing, you know, pushing these frames with, and the client is doing literally nothing. It's just, I mean, it's rendering the image, but the user is not like refreshing the page. It's just pushing new frames to the GIF. Um, and the cool thing is in this, the frame I just showed you, the idea was it had a complete GIF, but suppose it didn't. Suppose it was a security camera or a video game or something, and we're just pushing out whatever, whenever we want. Uh, so we can send anything using this data channel. So that's cool. Um, so I made a little multiplayer roguelike. So I'm going to refresh this page. And uh, I think I'm the little red guy. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the red guy here. So I'm going to start moving. And then I'm actually going to go on my phone and move this blue guy here. Um, oh, he's not moving. There we go. So my red guy is moving. This blue guy, they're racing. Uh, I'm going to come down and see if I can push this boulder. Ah, no, I missed. Um, but you can see the page is not refreshing. It's refreshing when I click links because we're doing that link thing where we go to the server and then come back. Um, but doing this thing, you know, telling him just like, you know, go west, um, he can just go west and he's just going and I can watch myself do that and I can watch other people do that. And I see somebody else uh, has perhaps noted the URL and has jumped in. Um, anyway, so this is, uh, this is this model in practice. Okay, so. I know what you are, of course, wondering, which is, you know, you say, Andrew, it can do anything. Can it run Doom? Of course it can run Doom. So here we have AO3 again, and I'm going to hop in here, pull up this menu, enter, OK, make a new game. So I'm playing Doom. Um, oh, I don't want to play. I want to play the easiest mode. Absolutely. Um, so. Here we go. We're playing Doom. So we can go forward. Let's run into this pit. Oh my God. Oh, geez. Oh, there's monsters in here. Uh, I'm going to click the start shooting button. Um, so there we go. I'm shooting now. I'm shooting. I'm shooting. Oh, geez. Uh, so anyway, you can see I'm, I'm definitely playing Doom. Um, it's, it's rendering stuff as I'm. Oh, I died. Who could have foreseen that? Uh, by the way, this is playing at about four frames per second um, because I have a real cut rate server that has a so-so connection. Um, but you could stream it at whatever whatever bandwidth you can tolerate streaming these GIFs. All right. Um, so last couple notes in the few seconds I have left. Um, for further reading, I use GIFs here, but modern browsers, I think, support this other thing called multi-part X mix replace that lets you do the same thing with other image types. You could actually stream a sequence of PNGs instead of using a GIF. You can say, like, it's not a PNG. It's a, like a channel for pushing PNGs. That It's exactly the same as what I showed you, but you can get better image quality than, than a GIF. Um, so that's something to investigate. And 
Um, so I wanted to embed interactivity into somebody else's static web page, like the AO3 thing or the you know, Stack Exchange profile. Um, but you can also do this same thing of like, oh, the GIF isn't finished yet for an entire web page. You can be like, oh, the web page isn't finished yet. Um, so there's this, this other guy, uh, Kevin, um, who has made a CSS only chat. So definitely check that out. It's pretty cool. I discovered that while I was uh, while I was researching for this talk. Um, so I also, I used a links, but anything that sends an HTTP request can work. Uh, and background image CSS is cool because it's like it, if an element appears on demand due to like other stuff happening on the page, um, then it will only pull the background image kind of when the time is right. So you can use that as a signaling mechanism to the server. And there's like anything else would work too. Like honestly requesting the image itself, does it like how a hit counter works? You know, you request an image and then you increment a count. Um, and that's it. Here's all the links. Uh, so for all of you, you know, looking at the live stream later, you can pause this and get all of these things. All right. Thanks so much.